but our influence is becoming more negative than positive. And it is because we, as America, have forgotten our God. It was said that those who forget their God, the nation that forgets its God, will surely perish. I don't want to perish as a nation. I don't want there to be a, a dismal outcome for my grandson who is only seven years old right now. Every parent works hard for their child to succeed them. Is that right? So, so the rest is here. My great-grandfather, my great-grandfather was a slave. I didn't say my great-great-great-great. My great-grandfather was a slave. That means I'm only four generations from slavery. But now slavery has taken an embodiment of a little bit different style. It's not just done with ethnicity. It's done by economic poverty. And why is that happening? Is because we believe that as long as I have more, I can keep you down there where I keep you quiet. That, that means that it's not talking to Caucasians against blacks or Hispanics. That's, that's just anybody. Anybody who feels that they can place themselves upon a pedestal to look down on you because they're better than you. That's always a bad state. I was on a plane four months ago, and I was very tired. I was just coming back from an overseas trip. And I enjoyed the privilege of being able to sit in first class. But then a service member got on that plane in uniform. And he was going to the back of the plane. And I jumped up and said, hey, take my seat. And he said, you sure? I said, trust me, you better take it quick. <laughs> and, and, I, and I gave him my seat. Why did I give him my seat? I gave him my seat because I wore that uniform for 26 years. I know what it's like to be told you have to leave your family to go across the water 5,000 miles and fight for a nation where the people hate you. You need a seat and comfort. And what do, we, what do we do for our service members when they come back wounded? Not just physically, but mentally. They turn around and they want to give job permits to five million illegal aliens and yet our service members can't find a job they want to give housing and education free of charge and our service members sleeping on the streets something wrong about that and you know what's even worse when our leaders turn around know it's going on and walk right by them that's what's even worse. So where, where, where is the prophet that's in America? Where's the person who is sounding the alarm enough of this foolishness? Where is the individual that's saying, hey, wake up. We are dying with our eyes wide open. Where's, where's the one that's doing that? Some of them are in places of comfort because as long as they don't say anything, nobody will bother them. Y'all know about that big closet that everybody's running out of? Yeah. That, that big old closet? Yeah. I think that's what we're running into. I had to go and testify before the Senate uh, this Wednesday against a bill that was a bill law that was against conversion therapy. And one of the comments that I made to the senators is that I can't believe we're even discussing something like this that you would even consider making a law that would forbid a minor to have access to health, even at the request of the parent. I said, you've, you've overstepped your bounds as a government to step now into the home to take away the parental rights to love, govern, and honor, and respect what is best for their child, not just what's convenient to an individual's agenda. Got quiet, kind of like just now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because when the strong voice of wake up comes across, it will make us start questioning ourselves. Thank God the bill did not become a law. But did you see what came in the paper the very next morning? Counterattack. President Obama uh, wants yeah. to submit an executive order oh, 
against conversion therapy. So now what if that happened 24 hours earlier? The state of Colorado would have a law banning conversion therapy, which there is no such thing. Anyone that is from the psychological field knows that it was originally a term called reparative therapy. But to read in the paper that they said there's overwhelming evidence that this is dangerous towards youth, yet I sat down and didn't hear one shred of legitimate, verifiable, scientific, or medical proof of one case. But it's because of word of mouth we say this person is supporting this and this person is supporting that, so we must go with it. Yet we turn and say, but if everybody else jump off of a roof, don't mean you're going to jump off. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just time that, that we, as even individuals, begin to start sounding our alarms. I'm not going to put up with this no more. I, I, I am no longer going to tolerate my rights which my family members have died to give me. I'm no longer going to tolerate my rights being ripped away from me just be at the stroke of a pen because a person feels they have the right to do it. So one of the things that I said to the senators, I said, this is not only a violation of the Constitution of the United States because now you're going against freedom of speech. You're also going against the Constitution because you're going to inhibit an individual for their pursuit of happiness by inhibiting what they can do on their job. And outside of that, because I am dual-headed, not only as a licensed minister, but also a licensed therapist, now it interferes with religion. So, so now, what do we do? We sit back, we sit back with individuals that we voted in office to look out for our benefit, and they use their personal agenda to pass laws, hurting the majority for the benefit of the minority. Now, it's different when there's something illegal being done against the minority. That should happen. But why fix what's not broke? Amen. I, I, my mom used to ask me that when I would tear apart the television, <laughs> tear apart the toaster. Tear apart the iron. I wanted to know how it worked. So I later became an electrical engineer. <laughs> My son did the same thing with cars that we brought him and everything. Like, and now he designs cars. The Bible says, watch what the Bible says today. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go, that when he is old, he would not depart from it. That's not just spiritual. It is referring to the offices that if you have a child that's showing potential within the medical field, don't throw a football in their hand. Challenge them within the area of medical. If it's education, challenge them in the way of, medical, of education. My daughter, she would sit down, I mean, she was only two years old, and she would pick up a book. It was upside down, but she acted like she was reading it. And now, I think she read her first 400-page novel when she was 10 years old. And I told my wife, I said, this girl's an avid reader, and I can't stand reading <laughs> So, so why don't I just give her my textbooks and say, read this to me, baby. <laughs> it's, 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 it's gotten to the point that every American, every Christian American, should write to the President of the United States and to their senators and to their congressmen and say, in my Popeye's voice, I've taken all I can stand and I can't stand no more. <laughs> this needs to stop. Your personal agenda is not why we put you in office. We put you in office to look out for us. Now, now, now watch this here. I, I listened to what Rush was saying, and that's a travesty. My mom was on welfare. I refused to be on welfare. My mom went on welfare because my father left the house. So when I got in a position where I could do something to assist my mother financially, you better believe I did my best at that. When, when, when I had to turn around and look where my great-grandfather lived, I said, I'll never live like this. I told my children, I said, you bet not ever live like this. And so when I told my children, I said, yeah, I had to go into an outhouse. Yeah, I had to take a bath in a trolley, in a, in a horse trough. They said, what? I said, yes. And they said, no, Dad, that's way back in ancient times. I said, oh, you think? 
<laughs> you think it's way back in ancient times? Those who don't learn from their past are bound and doomed to repeat it again. Listen to this here in closing. I think it's time for America to wake up and acknowledge the dismal state that we are presently in and refuse to allow the eroding of our nation to continue anymore. How do we stop it? One American at a time. That's how we stop it. I don't, I don't have to be in a position of authority to change things. You have just as much power as I do. Remember I said everybody get out your cell phone and call somebody? Can you imagine if everyone got out their cell phone and said, hey, listen to this, and that person said, wow, let me put somebody on. And then let me put somebody on, and let me put somebody on. I have 5,000 people on my Facebook account, and so if you take just 1,200 people on my Facebook and give them 50 people on their Facebook alone, I'm already reaching over 72,000. So, so how do we change? We change by connections. We change by networking. I want you to do something real quick. Give Derek Wilborn a big hand clap of praise right now. When Derek first came to me a few years ago, uh, it was named the Black Tea Party. He said, Bishop, you got to come join us. I said, I will not. And he said, you got to come join us, brother. You, you, you black. I said, that's why I won't. <laughs> I said, I refuse to be a part of any form of segregation whatsoever. But if you change the name, you got it. Now, it was interesting that even then when it was called the Black Tea Party, there were more other people outside of black involved in it. It was interesting that. And now look at it. Look at how it is shaped. Look at how it's metamorphed. It is now truly truth transcending color. It's not about if I'm an African-American or a Caucasian or an Asian. It's that I am an American, and these are the things that I stand up on and hold truth to. Amen. If we truly, truly get to the point where we said enough's enough, we can bring about change.